Hi everybody, this is Daniel Chris from Prehistoric Facts, and uh, since there is no questions uh, for this episode, so I'll actually do an extra episode for you guys, so it will actually be uh, basically my analytical review on the Black Hills Institute of Geological Research Museum, and also the Field Museum. Both of these museums I have actually been to. The Field Museum I've been twice. Uh, let's actually start with the Black Hills Institute. Uh, and basically, I've been there uh, the past May, and so it is actually a very, it's a very, it's a small museum, so basically it's in Hill City, South Dakota, basically western South Dakota, right on the Black Hills, and uh, basically what this, what this museum does actually, does actually have is basically, they have a load of skeletons, they have a really amazing collection of skeletons that they have there. The most famous skeleton they actually have there is Stan the T-Rex, the second most complete Tyrannosaurus Rex ever found. And so this is actually uh, a really great museum to actually see the really cool fossils, but even, th even though they do have some minerals uh, that they have in their mineral um, in their mineral room that they actually have. But um, it's small it's like I said, it's a small museum, but they have a very good collect they have a very good collection of paleontological uh, stuff that they actually have found. Now, when you're actually talking about in terms of like how big it is, half of the museum is actually the actual museum. Basically, is just the uh, the skeletons and the mineral room. The other half is the gift shop. The gift shop is like loaded. You got you can find anything in there that you actually want. I mean, they got minerals. They got uh, they got fossils. Uh, they also have. Uh, uh, replicas of fossils as well but I would say that you should just go for the replicas because the fossils are there are very expensive but I do but I did buy a fragment of a Tyrannosaurus Rex tooth and it has the serrations on it which is which is amazing and I actually just drooled over that when I actually saw that and it was it was at a really decent price and so I would actually give that museum basically uh, three and a half out of five so I mean it's a, it's not a bad museum but even though it's small so it would actually it would actually be fine for it to, like a it's like a starter museum that you actually want to go to because since it's not really a natural history museum and so um, it's actually owned and run by Black Hills Institute of Geological Research uh, president uh, Peter Larson and now he actually has no he has been known to actually have some trouble have some troubling uh, things that he's done in the past but even though um, just make sure that just to be just to let you know he's not there all the time so basically he's like anywhere that he can actually go find fossils but they basically that's what he is he's a fossil collector and uh, just be wary of of uh, some things that have probably gone around and if he'll if, but don't ask the residents anything about the music, about like Sue or anything like that, because they have very strong opinions about it. But even though uh, it's a it's a good museum, I would actually, I would give it three and a half uh, out of five. Now for the Field Museum of Natural History in Chicago, I've seen I've been to this museum twice. I've actually been to the the first time I've been to the museum was when I was 12 years old, and and that was the first time I got to see Sue. And that was amazing uh, to see Sue. And um, when I was a kid, I was just in awe of the size of Sue, and also um, how and how much pathology there is on her bones, basically in the skeleton. And uh, back then, uh, the museum was a little bit different. In turn, but basically, it was just uh, because um, there wasn't really that much of a movie theater at at that time, and also um, the dinosaur hall was bit, was on the parts of the dinosaur hall were actually on two different floors so it was actually like the first the, the entry basically the main hall right 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 around right around where sue is um they actually uh had a carnotaurus skeleton that they actually had there and i think some of the uh other kinds of fo other kinds of skeletons that they actually have mounted on the on the first level but on the second level, they actually had the other bits of the dinosaur hall, which is basically they actually had the Dospletosaurus skeleton. They actually have a Stegosaurus, Triceratops, Deinonychus, and uh, some of the uh, skulls of sauropods. They do have an Apatosaurus, 
and some of the marine reptiles that were actually roaming around the, in the Cretaceous. But the last time I've been there was actually in 2011, and and I got a chance to see Sue again. And also the museum was a little bit more different, and also it was actually the 10th anniversary of when Sue was actually mounted in the FIU Museum back in 2001. So, I mean, that was pretty cool to see. And they had a movie theater there. They had the presentation of Waking, the Tyrannosaurus Waking Sue, the Tyrannosaurus Rex coming alive which is a really cool 3d animated film uh, I do question I do question how uh, they portray how she got some of those injuries so I actually would say that um that the movie I would actually give it three out of five so that would be that'll be a start there but I mean they do have many other exhibits they actually have a, a gem hall which is amazing w one of the things in the gem hall is actually an opalized plesiosaur vertebrae I was just in awe of that. I was like, I didn't even know uh, of bones of actual vertebrates could opalize. And so that's that's amazing to me. And that's just basically how the minerals actually kind of work. You know, any basically the minerals can go into the fossils as long as it makes that fossil durable uh, to actually uh, hold and actually study. But of course, all the gems are in a glass case, so basically you can't touch them. So basically, um, that's basically off, lim off limits to touch the gems. But even though they do have a geology uh, department of the of the museum, they have meteorites, they have other kinds of minerals and rocks, and uh, they actually have uh, kind of like a globe uh, of the Earth. Basically, basically, I think it's based. I think it's. I think it's kind of like a like a spherical like television so you can actually see see the earth as it is but what it does is basically it actually uh, kind of goes back kind of goes back to 10,000 years to all the way to possibly a million years um, in the future and that actually shows the how the earth is warming up uh, throughout those years and so it shows how much climate change could actually happen and um, the dinosaur hall is just amazing. Mainly, it's just called the. I would say I would actually call it the paleontology halls because it's basically you actually have all the time periods that you need to actually look at in terms of the fossils. Of course, it starts from the beginning of the Earth all the way down to the Ice Age, and so that actually is amazing. And you get to see a collection of trilobites. I I I do I do love trilobites, but vertebrate. Fossils are my forte, and I actually love vertebrate fossils, and and basically invertebrates are a pain in the neck. So, but even though it's still amazing to actually look at some trilobites, and uh, when you actually get to um, basically the from the I'd say the Devonian uh, to the Permian, you actually see quite a divers diversification of vertebrates, and so that's why you see Devonian is the age of fishes. And then you get to the Permian, which is the age of reptiles. And so that actually shows how diverse uh, the vertebrates have actually become uh, throughout the Devonian to the, to the Permian. And so it's amazing to look at that kind of stuff. And uh, now I would, and basically they do have a really good Permian uh, exhibit, exhibit where they show you some really cool mammal like reptiles. Like you, you see, you see a Gorgonopsian skull. Uh, you actually see Dimetrodon. You see um, Edaphosaurus. You see, I think there was a Thrinaxodon in there, a Thrinaxodontid, uh, in that hall. And I think that's pretty, that's pretty cool. Uh, but the reptiles are, are really cool as well. And you get to see when you get to the Mes Mesozoic part, you get to see the, the not only just the, the other dinosaurs that they actually have, but even though it's it's a great uh, great look, great um, exhibit to look at some of the marine reptiles that actually roamed. You see a, a really good size of Vactinus uh, in there, and so, and uh, you get some mosasaurs that you actually have there. You find some ichthyosaurs from the Jurassic, and uh, and I think it's still, and I think there's a few pieces of plesiosaurs um, in that kind of department. But when you get to the dinosaurs, you actually 
See, they've actually expanded in terms of their dinosaurs that they have there. Not only do they have dinosaurs from North America, but they actually have dinosaurs uh, from Africa and and basic and South America, basically, and Canada. They don't really have uh, dinosaurs from Asia that much. I mean, Protoceratops is pretty much the only dinosaur uh, from Asia that is actually in that collection, but even in the dinosaur collection that they have there, but it's still cool to look at. And, um, and you see, and with the Ceratopsians, they actually have a wall of uh, replica skulls uh, that they actually have there of different Ceratopsian skulls. So you actually kind of wonder how, how diverse Ceratopsians have been in the Cretaceous, basically the late Cretaceous. It's amazing to me. And uh, I'd say the really cool thing that they added there uh, the last time, basically when I went there in 2001, in 2011 compared to 2001, is they added Majungatholus, or I mean, not Majungatholus, Majungasaurus, Majungasaurus skull. And I've always wanted to look at a Majungasaurus skull, and that is just, I mean, when you get a close look at it, you understand why they call it, why why they say this is the uh, theropod dinosaur that that a mother could love. I mean, it's an ugly looking skull. It's got all these pits and and like cauliflower like uh, bumpy structures on the skull, and, they ha and it has the horn on top of its head. And uh, and of course, Majungasaurus is a belly sore, and I've done a special episode of Majungasaurus uh, like the past year, so basically you can look at that and know what I'm talking about. And uh, the Patasaurus skeleton is amazing in there. They do have uh, Afri they do have one uh, African dinosaur. I forget the name, but it was a it was a prosauropod, if I remember correctly. It was found in South Africa, and it was Triassic, Jurassic border uh, dinosaur around 200 million years ago. I keep forgetting the name, but um, it, I think it starts with an R. But uh, if any of you can help me out, that'll be great. And, um, and I'd say the Herrerasaurus uh, there that they actually have is really cool as well. I mean, you actually get a you actually get the skeleton, but only just a look. A model of basically my, what it might have looked like, but I think you can thank Paul Serino for that. You can thank Paul Serino for that because since he actually does work in Chicago, but basically he works for the University of Chicago, and he actually does work for um, uh, the Chicago Museum of Science. Now that's a different museum compared to the Field Museum, and the Field Museum is actually right across from Soldier Field, uh, where the Chicago Bears play. And as you can tell, I'm a Packers fan, and I actually hate the Chicago Bears, so yeah, sorry Chicago, wish I can help you there, but sorry, I'm a Packers fan, I'll live and die as a Packers fan, and uh, and basically, um, the Brachiosaurus skeleton, it was actually used to be uh, inside, basically in the 90s, but when they actually had to take out, they had to take out the Brachiosaurus uh, from the inside, put it outside, I can't remember which side it's on, but uh, occasionally you see pictures on Facebook if you follow uh, the Field Museum on Facebook. They actually do have, uh, occasionally they'll have it wearing a Blackhawks jersey uh, during the winter. So that's kind of funny. I think it's funny. And so, but anyway, uh, but the main attraction in the Field Museum is Sue. Sue is an amazing skeleton. The pathology there, the pathology on the skeleton is just amazing. A uh, fusion on the tail vertebrae, right in the midsection of the tail, uh, probably been stepped on, or otherwise it's arthritis. Um, there's an infection on the right leg, uh, basically in the lower part of the leg. Um, but even though we don't know what how how that actually got there, how the infection took hold on that leg. But even though it was healed, but even though it made the bone stronger, so, but even though she might Sue might have actually been debilitated by that. But only that. But basically the left the right side of Sue, basically, you see numerous broken ribs, and uh, her right arm actually has an avulsion, basically right in the humerus, an avulsion from from basically a tendon or a muscle actually has been that actually has detached from the bone, and that's painful. And so, how Sue actually endured that? It, it went. She might have had her arm dangling. Uh, from that injury, 
So whatever happened to how whatever how it happened is probably either that um, maybe she was grabbing out to pray and basically the prey tr was trying to get away and then pulled her arm uh, far enough that basically that the tendon or the muscle actually just totally just ripped out of ripped up ripped from the bone and so and that's really painful but even though she recovered from that and you actually see the the healed wall the like that kind of like a castle wall of uh, healing a uh, regrowth of the bone uh, right where they tend to actually detach from the bone and that's amazing the broken ribs most of them are pretty much healed probably probably from fighting over uh, food or territory but if it was from hunting I would say it probably was caused by uh, probably a duck billed dinosaur because duck billed dinosaurs are probably more likely to crack the ribs like that but even though Ankylosaurus could do that as well, but even though Ankylosaurus, pro I don't, but T. Rex probably stayed away from Ankylosaurus majority of the time. But the most interesting thing of of Sue is that she has these holes in the back of her jaw that are caused by a parasite. And what this what this parasite was was basically is that it actually came. It was actually probably she was scavenging off of a carcass that was eat that was been that was killed. By another Tyrannosaurus Rex, they actually had this infection, and basically, this parasite latches on into the meat, basically the the carcass of the Triceratops of where the T-Rex is, that other T-Rex has been feeding on, and then basically Sue actually started eating the flesh and the guts of the and some of the bones of probably that Triceratops, and then. Bit, or, or some other kind of dead carcass like a duckbill dinosaur and uh, basically the parasite started um, digging in through the flesh and then actually getting into the bone that's why they I mean they look like bite marks but they're really not because basically it's a hard place to bite I mean only if Sue was actually kind of standing erectly with the tail on the ground and then basically the other T-Rex is standing horizontally and then basically Sue is exposing the bottom part of the jaw and then bam like that but that's hard to do but basically they don't really align with teeth that's the problem there but uh, museum as a whole I would actually give it a f four out of five and then I'd say that's that's a really good rating for me and it's a good place to look at Sue and great great place to look at the dinosaur hall and other exhibits as well go look at the other exhibits in um, the Fiam museum they're spectacular and so you'd be in awe of how many exhibits they actually have. They do ex they do have special exhibits, but basically those are a limited time though. So, but uh, anyway, so that's it for now. And uh, so the coming Saturday would actually be an answering questions episode. So basically, all of you guys get to have enough time to uh, send me questions by emailing me at dinochris71 at gmail.com. Uh, and basically, emails open 24/7, and also Facebook is open 24/7. Which is Dino, which is prehistoric facts of Dino Chris, uh, at fa on Facebook, like the page, and you can actually submit your questions on the comment section on any Facebook post, and the and the comment section is the best place I can actually look at the questions, and uh, you can also follow me on Twitter at the basically at symbol, C S G R A L L in low caps, and I post some pretty cool stuff there. And uh, make sure to take care of the people around you. And also for younger people out there, make sure, to, make sure to listen to your parents, your teachers, and your guardians. Those are the best motivation you can have for a good education. It's very important to have a good education because with a good education, you get a good job in the future. All right, that's it for now. I'll see you guys in um, the coming Saturday.